Hello and welcome back to the Clay Golem here. We are back in Foundry VTT um, and we are going to be looking at uh, continuing to build Fandelva. Now we're not going to get an awful lot done in this one but what we are going to do is we're going to solve a few problems that we've encountered. Uh, so we were starting to build this and we got as far as doing the Stonehill Inn. Um, it's been quite a while, quite a few videos. Um, we've not made much progress on building this because we're trying to work out the best way forward for us. Um, so uh, the reason why we got stuck here, we created all our NPCs and we've populated this and we're all happy with that, well, at least I am. Um, and we got the, the Stonehill Inn looking nice. And then we got to the shop part of it. And we were looking initially, if I just flip back to the appropriate scene, uh, we were, whoops, always wrong clicks uh, we were initially doing this and creating uh, these map pins that then we could use to for doing shopping in so Haley over here she can wander over uh, come do her shopping and, uh, and and do it through the journal now we had two choices we either had the really plain journal thing where we can just write out a price list potentially in a table within the journal and because we can now drag items into the journal and create those links the player could go in drag the item from the journal into their character sheet so they've got it and then manually adjust their money um, that's kind of as close to the paper and pen kind of method or closer to the paper and pen type of method nothing wrong with that that works lovely jubbly we looked at Monk's Enhanced Journal and we went, ooh, hang on a minute, that's a really nice way of creating shops and being able to use the journal to actually have that, click the buy button and it automatically takes the money and stuff. And that looked really, really good. Unfortunately, there are some glitches with it because of the changes to the 3.0 uh, so yeah, engine for D&D &D, combined with the add-on not being updated quite yet in line with that because there's still a few things happening um, and then we went to look at a third solution which was item piles which we did in the previous video which allows us one of the item piles we can create is an actor uh, so that is um, that looked really really good as well but we also encountered some glitches with that and it wasn't updating the active window when we were looking at it which was really frustrating trying to set things up and stuff uh, even though it seemed to work in game well i've got some solutions for those problems so i'm going to go up here and go to my user management so i added a new user in here and i created a new user called i've just called it server um, and I've given it Game Master permissions. So now when I'm logging into Foundry VTT, the app, I'm logging in as server. And what that means is, I'm going to drag my other window across, I can log in as Game Master um, and join the server as, a ga as Game Master and use it in my, um, in my browser window. W why? <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, a couple of things. It does make my words and things um, like in the menu on the right hand side a bit bigger which probably makes it a bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing so that's definitely a bonus um, yeah that's good it also means that the experience that I'm seeing here is much closer to what my players will see with regard to map scales and things like that um, and it gets around some of those niggly little problems we were having for example, setting up uh, and getting refreshes of those windows. So if I go back to my scenes and we pop back into the Stonehill Inn, this is in my Game Master version that's joined. We can see this map and everything that we had before, but I've been able to create our shop uh, and it works. And I haven't had any of the issues with it updating that window and having to close and restart and everything else. So I've gone through and I've now created off camera, um, gone through and created Toblin because I wanted to check it works. So we now have set up a shop where you can buy ale and beer, um, a cheap private room, cheese, a common room, goblets of wine, loaf of bread, mutton stew. We've got all of the prices for them. Yes, the cheap private room, it has automatically updated those prices and it's gone, oh, well, hang on a minute. If it's five this, then that's, you know, five silver, that equals one electrum that's where that confusion came in it's just like wasn't braining in my head at all so thank you for the comments that we that people made um just pointing out that that was 
obviously what had happened and I was too dumb to realise. Electron pieces, I mean, you know, <laughs> they've got to be different, haven't they? It's just got to be awkward. Um, so that's all right. So that's actually correct and it all works and, and everything. And I've been able to configure these. Now, what you will notice is it says at the top here, by services. So these are now all services. So when somebody comes and buys them, it doesn't add it to their character sheet. It takes their money, but it doesn't add it to the character sheet. Because, yeah, if they're going to buy a bed in the common room for the night, I don't want them, I don't want them <laughs> walking away with a bed. Um, that doesn't make sense. It's a service. And all of these things are designed to be eaten here. Um, you're not going to walk around with a mug of beer and take it on your dungeon with you. You might buy a barrel of beer to take with you, but you're not going to walk around with a mug of beer. It's a consumable, it's going to get used at this point. So for this kind of establishment, that's exactly what I wanted. I also have set it that he will not buy stuff from the players. You know, he's not interested in buying stuff back. He's only going to be selling things. Other shops will do different things, of course. Um... So we can populate the different items over here. And what we didn't talk about before, and I'm not using them at this point, um, is there is this thing about roll tables. So you can get it to um, to add um, items as per a roll table. And somebody, apologies, I'm rubbish at remembering who said what. It's a really, really good comment about using roll tables so you can have a random, uh, a random selection of goods. So every time the shop restocks, it may or may not have certain items. Um, it depends what's on the wagon that comes in from, in this case, from Neverwinter, which is a really nice idea. I really, really like that. Not applicable for this particular one, but I absolutely can see where that would be useful. And it's going to be like, oh, most of the time he will have these standard things, but there's a random chance about these other bits that may or may not uh, be in stock. So it's really good that we can do that and we can create roll tables to do that. I've also set the opening times, you know, so effectively he's around from 8 in the morning to 11 at night. Uh, he does need to sleep at some point, um, but he's around most of the time. This is his job and the shop will effectively open and close. It's not because necessarily the inn open and close, but Toblin has to sleep, so he's not always going to be available. Um, and of course the activity log, which I've cleared for us. And this works. Um, this works very nicely. I had a look at it. I've had a play with it. Really happy with it. I'm not going to take you through him because I've sorted him. Uh, and I've, for once, got it working off screen. So what I want to do, though, is I want to create another one. So oh, so can you just see on the right-hand side here, under my actors, I now have uh, Toblin uh, as an item pile character rather than, wherever he is, this version of Toblin who is, um, uh, you know, just a, a standard actor. Um, so what I possibly would like to do is to create a new folder in here, possibly. Should I? I don't know. New folder called uh, Merchants. Let's do that. And then I'm going to drop this Toblin. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. I want to drop him into that folder, uh, but I can't drag him that far. First of all, I can get rid of this Toblin. He's an old one. Go on, go away. Don't need you anymore. I've got I've got my real Toblin. Let's drop him in here. Now I can drag him up there. There we go. All right, so I've got this folder now um, for my NPCs in Fandelva, and then within there, one that is specifically for our merchants. Okay, because they are created slightly differently and if we want to go and maintain our shops and stuff, I want to be able to go and do that. All right, so um, we want to create our next shop or, or at least our next merchant. So rather than clicking on that map to access the shop, I want them to come in and actually go up to the character um, and interact with that character. Okay, so Haley, as long as she's in here, she can absolutely talk to our shop uh, and go and purchase stuff. That's going to work very nicely. Thank you very much. So let's do Barthens. Now I'm just going to move map to keep it uh, da, 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 get away from that campfire and stuff. Now Barthens Provisions is actually here. Um, 
I'm not going to create a, I'm going to create just a map pin that says this is Barthens, um, but I'm not going to link that to the shop and the journal in, in the same way. So item pile down at the bottom here. Let me just shrink that up. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, and then we can start editing. Whoops, uh, go away. Right, we want to right click and configure ownership first. And I want to change it to observer to make sure my players can actually interact with it. Okay, and yeah, I'm pretty sure observer is what I need for this. I can now open this up and we can start building this particular um, person. So I'm going to open the sheet. Okay, and this is the first thing I am going to change. Uh, and click that so I can change it and the name of this person she's Elm, Elm, Elmina Barthen so this is the person they actually have to do business with uh, I can update this portrait I need to upload my picture uh, where are you my dear and we created you there you are we created some of these NPC images as well. Uh, I know that image, you think, oh, but I think she looks a bit young for running this, but it does say that she's young. So, you know, whatever, good luck to her. She's obviously kicking butt. Let's bring this in, pop it behind. I want to change that. I want a different frame. I want to use this one for my NPCs to make sure she fits in. Happy to do that. She's got her portrait and everything, which is great. Lovely jubbly. We can close her again. Um, and now we can start to configure this pile. So we're going to go to configure here. I want to go to start with other settings. I hope this right, I think this writing's a bit bigger on screen for you guys with doing it through the, uh, the browser. We're going to make you a merchant. Merchant image. Okay, so we can use that same, um, that same image again, can't we, for this? <laughs> Come on, it's alphabet. I should know the alphabet. Uh, okay, so we can pop that in there. Now, here are some of the settings again. Infinite quality, quantity. We don't want to have infinite quantity. They will run out. Infinite currencies. Do we want her to be basically infinitely rich to buy stuff back? Um, I'm happy with that. Keep zero quantity. So when she's sold out of stuff, does it stay in the list? Now, I'm doing that for things like the beds and, and stuff like that. I don't think I do want here. If they buy up all of her spears, she's got no spears left. So I'm happy for those to disappear because our shop will restock. Um, so it says like, um, so when items are fully sold out, this merchant will not remove them, but instead sets them for not for sale instead. Actually, I will turn that on because it leaves them on there and says they're not for sale. So that's an easy way to say, oh, yeah, we're out of stock. Come back next week. So that might be useful. Um, item quantity visible. Yes, by default. Purchase only. So this means characters can only buy from here. They can't sell to here, which is what I did with Toblin Stonehill. Um, but I'm going to allow people to, part to sell stuff here as well. Hide new items, no. Uh, hide items that have zero cost, no. Um, log merchant activity, yes I do, so I can keep an eye on it. Let's just clear it, not that there should be anything on it. Prices, I'm going to leave them as there. And we've already talked about in the previous video that we can modify prices based on specific things, not too worried. Um, look at all these good, good stuff here. So the shop status is open hide the token when it's closed in other words when the shop's closed can they even see um elmina so we could say oh yeah shop's closed elmina's not even there let's try that we can do that we can set the opening times here okay so i'm going to say they're open from eight in the morning uh to six in the evening seems perfectly reasonable for this kind of thing and we can set particular days that they are closed which is nice isn't it um, so we could say they are closed on the equivalent of a Sunday you're not going to find them open now given the small town and stuff like that I'm going to have all of these shops are open every day um, because let's face it even if they're busy doing other stuff they're not going to turn down business they pretty much know everybody a big city that would make you know make much more sense uh, and we can automatically close it when our 
calendar, so this is all related to simple calendar. If simple calendar um, flags that this is a holiday, a celebration day, we can have all the shops closed because of that. I'm going to leave that on for the moment. Okay, this bit here is about refreshing that stock. So refresh items at open time. So when the shop opens at eight o'clock in the morning, it resets all of its quantities and everything like that every day. We can turn that on. I'm not going to do that for this one uh, because if they bought something yesterday, she's not going to suddenly have more the next day. It's only going to be when um, when deliveries get made. So I'm going to say for this one, I'm not going to tell the players this. She's just going to be when the next things come in. Um, so I'm just going to set that to Monday. So every time it hits a, effectively a Monday, it should restock her items. How cool is that? Okay, let's go back and look at these main settings now. So our other settings are done. Main settings, is it enabled? Yes, interaction distance. Um, because they're in... Uh, I'll come back to that. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that yet. Okay, so... Enable item inspect. Yes, they can see what it is. Split items by item type. Yeah, yeah let's do that for this one. Um, here's where we have that interact macro. Now, somebody correctly said that, um, so we've got some of these macros that we created before. This is what's particularly useful for, uh, or some of these places where we have macros on items and things like that. It could be, you know, we've got voices, we've got music, or we've got anything like that at all. But for some of the items when we buy it, if it's a service, that's where you can use a macro say, well, hang on a minute, they've just bought Cure Light Wounds, therefore cast Cure Light Wounds on them. Um, yeah, of course, makes sense, doesn't it? So we'll have a play with that at some point where you've got things like temples. And you can go in, pay a fee to get Cure Disease and things like that that's going to be cast immediately. So do we delete the entire shop when empty? No, no, we don't. We don't, oh, I've run out of stock, therefore I cease to exist. Uh, can item stack? Yes, happy with that. We can edit the descriptions here. So this is where we can put in and describe the shop or the individual, however we want to do. And we can do all sorts of override currency things, but that's fine, happy with that. All right, so, uh, whew, we're getting there, aren't we? Now it says this pile is empty. Uh, if we open the sheet, we can also see there's nothing in here, which is great. I need to grab Elmina and I'm, uh, let's create her shop. Let's create her shop first. So let's create a new scene. And this is Barthens Provisions. And again, I really don't have to do this. Uh, show in navigation. I am going to, I am going to sh not show in navigation normally. No, I'm not. I don't want to do that. Uh, background image. Let's find our background image. We don't want it in there. We want it in maps, um, but we haven't got it yet. So let's go to choose file. Don't want it in there. If I go to my maps folder, taverns and shops, here's a bunch of things that I generated um, just because. Uh, and I could, for example, pick uh, this one. So, right, we're going to use that. Uh, it's going to be gridless. Okay, don't need that. Uh, lighting, no token vision, no fog exploration, global illumination. We don't need anything else. Um, we could, of course, find some ambience for that. Okay, let's pop to that scene. Okay, just a nice picture. Just something to look at that's a bit different um, if they come into this shop. It don't need a floor plan like we did for the Stonehill Inn. It can just be pretty. Okay, so let's drag Almina on here. Um, and we can stick her up there. Now, of course, one of the things we potentially could do, I'm not going to do it now, is we could look at using a bigger version of this image and adding it to a, uh, a tile. So effectively, instead of, in fact, we can, we can even do something with this right now. This is going to be the non-exciting way to do it, but we should be able to scale this up a bit. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, um, but we could 
obviously change this token um, we could use it as a tile rather than the token we could get rid of the border completely and we could just have that blended in a bit nicer especially if we had this as a PNG so it didn't have the background and it was all see-through um, then we could just stick that image right there um, and they could go and interact with it okay you notice it's called item pile we don't want that do we so if we come into here identity we don't want it called item pile it's Elmina uh, Barthen is it, it's Barthen yep Barthen which is great display name happy for it to always be on uh, we've got the represented actor that's all good lovely jubbly friendly by default yes appearance we, we've just done the scaling up um, with vision we don't need vision enabled for this um, and they're not producing light and we don't want hit points and things displayed okay so there we go that's we've got our shop so if we double click on this now we're clicking on the token you can see this is opening up we've got buy items populate items activity log automatic opening and closing time it's currently open and it opens at eight and closes at six we can got description here we can edit the description directly here that the players see and we've got a few settings like being able quick settings to say purchase only hide new items uh, edit each item's costs etc we don't need to do any of that we kind of did what we set that as we wanted to before but we now need to actually populate some items for selling so this is looking good isn't it yeah so this is pretty much apart from things like popular items pretty much what the players are going to see nice image etc so this is where we've got the option of the roll tables of course uh, and at the moment it's saying we've got no items so let's uh, just double check we can drag an item in like that there we go so we can easily chuck a beer in here and that's now available for us to sell but this is Barthens so we're gonna have some different things here um, there we go I want to go to my items I'm gonna bring this up now just reading from the uh, adventure module it's the biggest trading post in Fandolin. It stocks most ordinary goods and supplies, including backpack, bed rolls, ropes, and rations. Um, it's open from sunup to sundown. Um, it does not stock weapons or armor, uh, but they can purchase other adventuring hit gear here, except for items more than 25 gold. So that's kind of our rules around what we can add. So ammunition is probably out. Armor is out. Containers, which is going to have backpacks. Um, you might be able to buy barrels here, and baskets. Remember, this is a very much a general supplies place. Um, probably can buy pouches, um, some glass bottles, um, a haversack if we want it, flasks, apple scroll cases, which will sell jugs, um, normal pouches, sacks, um, saddlebags. Yeah, sure. Okay, so all those different containers. Uh, equipment wise now again we need to be careful we're not accidentally adding things on that are ridiculously expensive or things like that you can buy clothes here um, doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. all sorts of things so there's gonna be quite a lot of items for sale in this place pack saddles uh, yeah pack saddle Let's stick that in there not gonna have many of those um, Da, 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 uh, rings, 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 ring. uh, robes, perhaps not, vestments, travel, traveler's clothes, yes, that makes sense, um, good, right, let's get rid of, scroll all the way up, it's a big area, equipment packs, now I'm not going to go nuts and say like, oh yeah, you can buy burglar's packs here, that's not the kind of thing this shop would stack, but, um, Explorer's pack. That makes perfect sense. Absolutely. We're going to have one of those, that's for sure. Um, Food-wise, sell rations. Yeah, happy to sell rations. Happy to sell water skins. Uh, loot, well, uh, there's all sorts, all sorts of things covered with the heading of loot. Bedrolls, yes, you do. Blankets, yes, you do. Uh, maybe not books. Crowbar, with its image of a pickaxe <laughs> uh, hammers yes hourglass yes uh, ink bottles ink pens this is your general supermarket kind of stuff ladders yeah not gonna be many but will um, merchant scale probably not miners picks 
Uh, she'll have a couple, although this is not her, her real bag. We sell parchment, probably not paper. A pole, yep. You can have poles. Shovels, yep. Stealing wax, we'll have a bit of that. Sledgehammers, yes. Small knife, yes. Oh, soap. Remember, this is the general store for the whole shop, uh, for the whole town. A uh, steel mirror, maybe. Tinder boxes, definitely going to have those. And whetstones, definitely going to have those. So it's going to be a lot of stuff we can buy here. Poison, unlikely. Potions, probably not. Um, I'm not sure that makes sense, uh, considering what she's doing here. So yeah, let's let's just not do potions. Rods again, doesn't make sense. Scrolls, not really. Tools, yes. So. Uh, what are we going to be? Brewer's supplies, calligrapher's supplies, carpenter's tools. That makes definite sense. Cartographer's tools makes definite sense. Um, cook's utensils makes definite sense. Um, a drum? Why not? <laughs> Leather worker's tools? Yes. Um, what else might we have from here? Potter's tools? Yeah, we'll have those as well. Um, and woodcarver's tools. Yeah, let's go with those. All right. So again, probably not things the players necessarily want to buy. Uh, trinkets. Well, mm, uh, candles. Yes, want candles. Uh, carpets are flying. Probably not. Some chain. Yeah, she can sell some chain. Uh, do, 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 do. This is exciting, isn't it? Just watching me chuck stuff into uh, into a list. Uh, folding boat, no. <laughs> rope, definitely rope. Yep. Hooded lanterns, yes. Um, iron flask, uh, iron spikes, yes. Uh, normal lamps, yes. Uh, yep, some locks. Um, do, 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 do. Oil flasks, yes. Pittons, yes. Probably not a portable hole. <laughs> <laughs> Just chuck it in there, see if the players notice. <laughs> um, torches, yes. Okay, good. Let's go all the way up. Let me just close that section. There's just so many things in here. Wands, uh, probably not. Uh, and of course, there's weapons. Now, there might be a couple of things in weapons we would say, well, actually, you know, they might, you know, daggers, for example. Really simple stuff that we could probably justify. Um, she might have. There are other places to get this. So, all right. So we got whole tons of items there. Now I've obviously just manually added those, but of course I can. Once this is done, I can clone this person, um, or rather clone this actor with all of the shop attached to it, um, and rename them. And there could be somebody exactly like this, or there could be twelve people exactly like this in Neverwinter in different shops and things like that and all I need to do is change the image, image change the name and they've got the same type of stock um, which is very plausible okay so now looking at our buy items you can see that this has broken it down into consumables into containers equipment etc and it's starting to look like a proper sort of uh, proper general store and it's why I went with the uh, the background image this one that I did because I wanted it to look like a proper general store. Right, so um, what we need to do now is how many items do they have of each? So let's say they've got three backpacks, uh, six barrels. It doesn't really matter. Baskets probably want a few, a few baskets. Uh, bed rolls. Let's make sure there's enough for people. Um, blankets. There's a couple of buckets. Um, lots of candles. Um, two lots of carpenters tools as member vandalins being rebuilt in the moment so it makes sense um, we're gonna have some chains uh, yeah we'll have a few sets of common clothes not much um, cooks utensils only one couple of crowbars um, some daggers a drum explorers packs we'll have a couple of those accidentally press three <laughs> doesn't matter yeah we'll have some flasks Glass bottles, they're expensive. We're gonna have a couple of those. Hammers, oh yeah, we have lots of hammers in stock. Handy have a sack. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that. We've got backpack, we don't need that. Uh, rope, yes. Absolutely, gonna have quite a lot of rope. Some lanterns, yeah, we're gonna have some quite a few of those. 
hourglass. That's expensive. We're going to have one of those. Ink. We'll have a little bit of ink. Doesn't want to change that one, but there we go. Um, pen, yeah, they're not kind of thing to have loads of. Uh, jugs, yes, people always need jugs, don't they? Um, a couple of ladders in place. Remember, again, the place is being rebuilt, so might be able to sell ladders. Uh, normal lamps, yeah, a few of those. Um, yeah, a few locks kicking around. Map cases. You know, we want to make sure that things like those dwarves off exploring and things like that, they've got access to stuff. Miners picks, I'm only going to give a few because there's the miners exchange, which is going to be a better place to buy mining equipment. Um, but not it's not just miners that need pickaxes. They're going to be used around town as well. Oil flasks, yes, we're going to have 12 of those in. We're only going to have one pack saddle. We're going to have, uh, we're going to have quite a few sheets of parchment. Pittons, a dozen of those. Um, we're going to have quite a few poles. Potter's tools, don't need more than that. Um, and I'm just kind of randomizing these. Because it don't matter, does it? Um, 30 sacks. Sealing wax. Shovels, yes. She's likely to sell quite a few shovels around here. Uh, silk rope. I'm only going to say two of those. Don't want to be too many. How many does say of the other rope? Uh, wherever that was. Uh, hemp and rope. Nine. Yeah. Okay, good. Sledgehammers. Yep, we're going to have a few sledgehammers that kicking around. Some general utility knives. Yeah, they're always um, important. We're going to have soap. Yep, big box of soap. A uh, couple of steel mirrors. Quite a few pre-prepared tinder boxes, torches. Yeah, we're gonna have a couple of dozen of those. Travelers' clothes, some basic clothes and things like that. We're gonna have water skins. Yes, again, people are off exploring. A few of those whetstones um, and wood carvers' tools. One. So that's how I'm going to leave that at the moment. Now, if you look at the activity log, you can see it's tracking all of those things that we've just done. Um, which is why it's useful to <laughs> clear the activity log because all the DM stuff is in there. All right, so we now have, if I close that, we now have a shop. Oh, why have I got a condition on there? Oh, uh, encumbered. <laughs> I don't need it to worry about encumbrance, but that's what it's doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, 7, uh, 754. Uh, in, uh, out of 150 so yeah it's showing her as encumbered which yeah great happy for that to um you know to to do that except i don't care about her um her having encumbered encumbrance because of course she's not carrying this stuff that's fine yeah just ignore that uh yeah so we've got this we've got a little scene here we've got a uh somebody in here so we can pop our characters in they can walk into the shop um, and of course, what we can do is once they've been here once, boom, here's Haley coming to the shop. Um, once they've been here once, of course, we can easily um, just make this scene available for them to come and access whenever they want to. So the characters can move themselves to the shop and do their shopping in here. And while they're in the shop, anything that's happening on, for example, this scene, they won't be able to see because they're doing their own thing. So you could end up in town if some people are in here doing their shopping, um, somebody else is in Bath and Provisions doing their shopping, um, somebody else is wandering around town and stuff. So you can give your individual players that bit of freedom to move around town, go to their own scenes that they want to, do their own bits of shopping, they don't all have to be together, um, which might be nice. Um, that's really difficult to do pen and paper because everybody yeah they scatter all over the place and you can only deal with one person at a time one player at a time but this way yeah Haley can be coming in here perusing the shops touching all the merchandise deciding what she wants etc um, without having to uh, worry about what everybody else is doing and the DM can focus on other stuff for example another member of the party getting the crap kicked out of them by red brands in the pub or something okay so we've got our quantities, we've got our prices, we left this at default prices, happy with that. Um, and we've got just at the bottom there, uh, we've got the daggers and stuff. So that's it. 
that is how I am going to move forward with doing my shops in Fandelva. And you notice we didn't encounter a single problem about updating these pages and it not showing those updates. It went really, really smoothly. And I think that's purely because I'm now coming into uh, coming into my GM as a, a user rather than directly through the Foundry server, if, you, if that makes sense, like I said at the beginning. I'm really happy with this method. Um, I think I prefer this method over monks, dare I say it. <laughs> okay, so now we know we've got a plan moving forward. That's how we're going to do it. So we've already managed to do that. What I do need to do, last thing I want to do here is, um, last thing I want to do at the moment <laughs> is add some labels. So this is Barthens Provisions. Um, I don't need a corresponding journal entry because I'm not using it for that. Um, okay, so it's general. I, I can choose a an icon here. Um, book. Do I want? I probably want. There is a barrel. I think wasn't there? Is there a barrel? Yeah, barrel. General provisions. I think barrel will do nicely. I do want to make that icon bigger. There we go. So we can have that as Barthens provisions. So th let's make sure globally visible. Yeah, good. We want that uh, that on there. Uh, so the players will be able to come in and see that. Oh, okay. I can see this icon. That's Barthens provisions. I could hide it until they initially investigate, but it's going to be a sign outside. That's fine. So they can wander over and go, oh yeah, I want to go to Barthens Provisions. Now the next trick, I'm not going to do it in this video because we're right at the end here. The next trick, what I want the players to be able to do is go, oh, if they double click Barthens Provisions, will it take them into and change their scene automatically to Barthens Provisions? That'd be nice. I bet there is a way. I bet there is. I've not looked at it. I have no idea yet. <laughs> but... If anybody does know, drop it in the comments for us. That'd be really good. Uh, and last thing on that. So very last thing in this video, honestly, I promise. Um, these, especially these last few videos where we've been going through, I really encourage you to look and read the comments that people are dropping because they are picking up so many things that I'm missing or I don't understand. And there's some really, really good stuff there. So if you're here to kind of learn ways that you can do it, the comments is going to add huge amounts of value and build on what I'm doing. Uh, it really, really is worth doing that. Um, so thank you ever so much for those people who are doing it and putting stuff in the comments and correcting those mistakes and stuff. It really, really does make a huge difference. Um, and everything's beginning to feel a bit like a, a little community now where we're kind of helping each other out and making suggestions and mostly criticising my stupidity, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, great. Well, thank you for watching. Um, Remember, if you're not subscribed, to do add to it. Hopefully, we can get back into a bit of flow of finishing off Vandelva reasonably quickly now we've got over this major hurdle. Uh, and we can crack on with getting this particular one done. Thanks, guys. Take care.